From within the audio mixer, you can apply effects directly to tracks, and that can be really convenient. For example, let's say you have one track with a whole lot of clips in it, and you want to apply the same effect to all of those clips. Or rather than apply that effect one at a time to those clips, you can simply apply that effect to the entire track, and it'll affect all the clips equally. Or let's say you have several tracks that you've output to a single submix track. You can then apply one effect to that submix track, and it'll affect all of those other tracks equally. So it can be pretty convenient to use the audio mixer to apply effects to a track. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this lesson. Go to Working Files, Projects, and then open up 2002 Mixer Audio Effects. I'm going to keep things pretty straightforward here. We have one clip on one track. So let's go to the audio mixer, and there will be just one track and master. I'm going to pull this thing out of the frame by clicking on the grabber bar there and holding on the control of the command key, pulling it out, letting go of the mouse button. There we go. Let me pull this thing over so we just see that much of the mixer. Get it all the way up to the top and all the way down to the bottom. There we go. Lots of real estate there. What I want to do now is show you where to apply effects. If you look here, there's no obvious place to apply effects, but it's behind this little disclosure triangle there. Click on that, and this shows you these three windows here. The top one is where you apply effects. This middle one is where you apply sends, S-E-N-D-S, -S, sends. We're not going to work with sends inside this course. It's kind of a higher level way of working with audio, so I'm going to leave that to you if you want to pursue that. And here is where you see the controls for the effects when you apply an effect. Here's how you apply an effect. You go up here to this drop-down list or this disclosure triangle and say, find the effect that you want to apply. We can do something simple here. At first, we'll try treble. There you go. The treble effect has now been applied. And when it's selected, then its controls will be active down here. Treble effect is only one control. That's boost. So let me go back here to the beginning of this clip, right there. And we'll just play this, and I'll start adjusting boost. How much you wanted me to stay, but it just could... There you go. It's pretty straightforward. The one little drawback to this is that you can't keyframe the effects inside the track. But there you go. You can control them there. If you want to turn it off, you click this little F button, just in case you want to isolate an effect and not work on all of them at once. Turn it on or off here. Couldn't be that way. That's off. Yeah, I know how much you wanted me to... That's back on. I think you could hear the difference. What happens if you want to add an effect that is more than one property? Here it's just one. It's fairly straightforward. I'm going to delete the treble, then we're going to track down another one here. To delete an effect here, it's only one way to do that. Just go to this drop down list and select none. That gets rid of that effect. Now I want to track down reverb. And reverb is an effect you're going to use a lot if you do some work in the tracks like this, where you can, let's say, output several tracks to one submix. You want to apply reverb to all those tracks at once. So reverb is pretty common. If you click this drop-down list, you see you have, what's that, seven different parameters, seven properties. That can get pretty tedious. You click on one, you click on another, you make that control, you click on another, you control that. Pretty tedious. Well, let me show you a little secret. I'm not sure many people know about this, but if you right-click on the word reverb, there's edit. And there's a little reverb graphical interface. How about that? And if you click on one of these presets here, right-click again and select one of these presets, like large hall, look at this. There it is. Let's listen to this for a second. Well, I know how much you wanted me to say. Cool. Now, if I want to change that preset to something else, I right-click again. And we'll go on down to, let's say, small room and watch the graphical interface. It's going to shift there. There we go. But it just couldn't be. And I can change it on the fly here. Yeah, I know how much you wanted me to say. But it just couldn't be that way. There we go. So that works pretty well. Let's show you one more that works pretty well. I'll close that one down there, and I'll delete this one by clicking None. Let me track down the Pitch Shifter. I'm going to go back to the beginning <laughs> here. Click on this little drop-down list and go down to Pitch Shifter. There you go. And once again, we can open up the graphical interface, and now we'll go find a preset. Notice it's at Neutral now, zero semitones, zero cents. We'll find a little preset here. I'll right-click, and I'll go I'll say third higher. Third higher is four semitones. Let's see what that sounds like. I know how much you wanted me to stay. <laughs> It doesn't sound great, but that is a preset, and you saw the change right there. If we go over here and click another one, we'll go to Cartoon Mouse. Whoa, 12 semitones. <laughs> but it just... <laughs> oh, no, I'm not going any farther there. I don't want to hurt your ears. But you can see how that works. It's pretty simple. You don't have to worry about all this stuff down here. In this case, it's only three, but in some cases, it's a lot. Let me show you one that is a lot and not so convenient. I'm going to click None here, then go track down Multi-Tap Delay. Multi-tap delay, if you right-click on it, you'll see that edit is grayed out. There is no nice graphical interface for multi-tap delay. So what do you do instead? 
you've got that. Oh my gosh, you got four different echo settings, right? And three elements per echo. This could get a little tedious doing one at a time here. So you might be reluctant to add multi-tap delay. Let me close that one down, click none. Now some effects do have graphical interfaces, but they don't work with the presets. Not really clear why that is, but that's just the way it is. So I'm going to go to EQ. There's EQ. I'm going to open up the editor. There it is. It's in neutral now. Absolutely nothing's been applied, but I'm going to do a preset. I'll do something like loudness, and loudness will increase the bass and the treble and things like that. And nothing shows up there, unfortunately. I click again, and let's say go to 1940, which has this funny thing. It did change a little bit there, but it doesn't show the preset at all. If you listen to it, there's no difference. Couldn't be that way. I'll change this to another preset. Let's say Master EQ. Yeah, I know. I'll change there. Go to Warm Presence. How much you want? You see, it kind of shifts there a little bit, as if it's trying to pop up with the preset, but it doesn't work. So. Perhaps on your machine it will, but on mine it's not. So this is one of those things where you got to manually do it. I click on low here if I want to boost the low a little bit for the loudness. Click on high if I want to boost that a little bit. Just to kind of do that. So this is how we would do it here. We would do it manually rather than use a preset. Wanted me to stay, but it just couldn't be that way. Oh, I know how much you wanted me to stay. There you go. So that is EQ. And if I were to go, let's say, to one of the three effects that uses the same interface, phaser, flanger, and chorus, the same kind of thing would happen. I'll go to chorus, for example. Chorus seems to be even less cooperative. If I open up the editor there, that's the editor for chorus. I'll just play this for a moment. But it just couldn't be that way. What you're hearing is kind of the default chorus. Now, if I right-click on this and say go to negative or something like that, yeah, I know how much it doesn't change. But if I do make some change here, but you wanted me to stay. It seems like it doesn't really work right away, but if you do it a couple of times, then it does work. So don't fret if it's not working right away. Mess with it a little bit more. Yeah, I know how. Eventually, it'll come around, I think. It's just one of those little things, I guess, that you wanted me to stay. needs to be tweaked a couple of times. Hey. But my guess is that if you're going to do work on the track, most of the work will be with EQ and or reverb, because those are the kinds of things that you do toward the end of the production. So that's how you apply effects to tracks. I'll show you how to make submix tracks in another lesson where applying effects again comes into play.